Hi, this is Stephen from Own or Disso. In today's video, I am reviewing the new 2020 Acer Helios 300. Now, Acer has updated the internals to include the 10th gen i7 10750H, 6 core CPU, and RTX 2060 that boosts up to 90 watts in turbo mode. We also get a Wi Fi 6 and a very competitive price of $1,199 on Amazon, which is where I bought mine. Now, I do put an affiliate link for it in the description, and I think for the hardware that you get, it is very good value. The chassis remains largely unchanged, keeping the same blue gamery theme from last year, so let's see if it's something worth picking up. Like before, the lid is made out of black anodized aluminium, with blue decals at the side and a blue Predator logo in the center. So the keyboard deck remains the same as it was last year. They have made one change though, added some air intakes here at the top, so that is good. The deck remains to be aluminium, so that's nice. And it, you know, it stays fairly clean. You do have a large Windows Precision trackpad and that works well, although it does rattle quite a bit, which is a shame. You do have a separate number pad with the Predator Sensor software button here, so that works well. And I do like the turbo button here, which also lights up the show when it's activated. So the keyboard lighting is in four different zones. And it's fairly good. And of course you can change it to, uh, to have dynamic lighting, so various different patterns. So in the box they give you a neoprene predator sleeve, so that's nice to have. Now the back cover is similar to before, it's, of course it's still ABS plastic, but this time it used to be black here. The uh, heat sink uh, shrouds, now it's silver. I do prefer the black from previous. And uh, actually they have increased the air intakes out I think compared to previous as well. You still get the same 59 watt hour battery which I got three to four hours of runtime that's at uh, streaming YouTube at 40% brightness. You do get a uh, hard drive there and they do supply you the necessary tools you know get the screws and you get the SATA cable and it's good for seven millimeter uh, drives. Uh, you still have two uh, two slots for M.2s one is occupied uh, here, of course, and uh, but there's no thermal pad or anything for this one. Um, but they, there is the screw. Uh, you got the uh, Intel AX201 Wi-Fi 6 card, two sticks of uh, DDR4 2933 MHz RAM, dual channel. It's nice to have, and of course you have got the fourth gen Aeroplade uh, fans here, which I found were emitted quite a bit of bit of wine sound, you know, particularly at mid speeds. Uh, you still get the four heat sinks, but these fans do move a lot of air. Expect around 55 decibels under load, even using the auto fan. When at idle, the fans aren't that loud, but you can hear them pulse up and down. And it's that change in tone that bothered me. They certainly moved a lot of air though and do a good job of cooling the chassis. And the plastic bottom shields you well from any heat. Within their software you can choose auto fan, max fan or customize the fan speed of the CPU and the GPU yourself. Acer gives you three GPU overclock modes. Turbo which increases the watts to the RTX 2060 to 90 and as you can see in Rainbow Six Siege a boost clock of 1725 MHz. The fast profile maintains the 90 watts and a boost of 1665 MHz and normal reverts the RTX 2060 down to 80 watts and a 1560 MHz boost clock. Now to give you an idea of the effect the fans have on thermals, here is Far Cry New Dawn using ultra settings. Auto fan is at the top and the CPU goes up to 93 degrees and the GPU stays around about 75. Now just increasing to the max fan, the CPU drops down to a max of 87 degrees and the RTX 2060 at 80 watts drops to 69. At the bottom is turbo mode which of course increases the max fan as well and this sees the CPU touch 93 degrees and the GPU stays cool at 73 degrees. The turbo mode does result in a good performance boost so it's good to have that option. But where are these 115 watt RTX 2060 cards that Nvidia promised? I show stock in dark red and turbo in light red above it. I was able to undervolt the system by 80 millivolts and also tried overclocking the GPU a little bit. 
Here is Shadow of the Tomb Raider using DX12 higher settings and undervolting does help you reduce your temperatures, uh, which may allow you to reduce the fan speed to a quiet level. But for all my testing, I used auto fan and turbo mode. The Helios 300 handles this game very well, and in this chart I show how it performs against last year's model in green with the 1660 Ti and the new AMD HP Omen 15, again using a 1660 Ti. The Omen costs 13% more, yet the Helios 300 is 13% quicker. So gaming bang for buck is where the Helios 300 is at. Here is Battlefield 5 DX11 auto settings using auto fan. At the bottom I show it overclocked and undervolted. Now I am using a different map here for the undervolt footage, so don't read too much into the frame rates, but the CPU doesn't see the same reduction in temperatures as we saw before. But the 2060 does get a nice boost to its clock rate. Either way, the game makes your laptop run very hot, so staying around about 90 degrees isn't too bad. Although I would like to have seen lower, given how loud the fans are to achieve this. This time I compare it to last year's model with the 1660 Ti, and the new ASUS TUF A15 with the GTX 1660 Ti shown in blue. Again, the new Helios 300 performs well. 95 FPS is very good in this game. So how does the i7 10750H stack up against the previous 9750H and even the new Ryzen 5 4600H? Now the Blender benchmark measures the time taken to render an image, so lower the time the better. In yellow at the top is the 4600H and that beats all of the Intel chips. Below that is the 10th gen 10750H. In light red, I show that uh, with an undervolt, you do get an improvement in performance, and even the stock CPU beats out the 9750H quite easily. We see a similar trend using handbrake, although the stock 10750H performs the same as the 9750H here. And in Cinebench R20, the undervolted 10750H actually beats the 4600H, so not too bad. So let's compare the screens between the Helios 300 on the left and the Omen 15 with the uh, AMD CPU on the right. Now, the Helios 300 uses the same a Euro panel as last year. It's 144 hertz, 9 millisecond, and it's got 96% of sRGB and 72% uh, of Adobe RGB and 73% of the P3 color space. And it's slightly brighter according to my Spider 5 Pro, 321 nits versus uh, 316 nits on the Omen. But either way, they're both very good panels, and you will notice that the, the footprint, of course, is a little bit bigger on the Helios 300. Here is a chart comparing the brightness of the Helios versus the Omen 15, and you can see how much brighter the Helios is. At 25% brightness, it is the same as 75% on the Omen. Compared to the 144Hz panel on the new Omen 15, the ghosting performance is very comparable. So the panel itself is the same as before so it does have a little bit of flex to it of course and the top bezel is you know pretty large but you'd still do have the webcam here at the top so 720p webcam and i like it it's fairly sharp good colors decent brightness and the microphone works well as well and look we'll test out the max fan i think what you'll find is you'll hear it ramp up and then once it's uh, sort of settled in you won't hear it anymore so let's check that out Okay, not bad at all. Now comparing the backlight bleed between the two models, of course the Helios on the left and the Omen on the right. Now Acer has always had an issue with this panel on uh, the backlight bleed and this one's no exception, quite a bit at the bottom left hand corner. So they have actually changed the ports a little bit here on the left hand side. Um, previously you had a power connector in between the air vent and the Ethernet jack. Now that's been moved to the back of the laptop. That's a big improvement in my book. Um, so you also have two USB uh, type A ports and a combo headphone mic jack. So the right hand side is the same as before with the USB type C, USB type A, HDMI and a mini display port. So around the back you can see the power port which is a nice position as well as the silver shrouds around the heat sinks and the heat sinks like before are anodized blue. And it's weighed. 4 pounds 14 ounces and with the 230 watt power brick 6 pounds 8 ounces the speakers fire down at the front they are okay average really and using the included dts x audio software actually made no difference even when using headphones good news though if you're into music production the helios 300 did pass my real-time audio test 
So how would I sum up the Helios 300? Well, Acer has continued to offer excellent value for gaming. A 90 watt RTX 2060 for $1200 is pretty decent. And it's not as if you get a pokey screen with it either. Sure, it still has backlight bleed issues, but it is bright, responsive, and has little ghosting. You also get a good RGB keyboard and options to adjust fan speeds and overclocking. The main things that bothered me was the rattly touchpad and the fans. Sure, I did get used to the whining noise under load, but that pulsing sound at idle still bothers me. The build quality is the same as it was last year, and I like that they moved the power connector to the back. Now, if you did find my video useful, consider subscribing as it does help fund other reviewed laptops I have to buy. Thanks for watching. Bye now.